Well, this is the university boxing gym, and we've been doing the same thing for 30 years. Back when I started the gym, I had a good friend named George Holton. My uncle really um, built the gym. Uncle George Holden, he actually built the gym for Mr. Glover. I felt like that if kids had the ability to come in here at that time, it was assumed that uh, if they had something else to focus on, that maybe they could come in here, box, build, build self-esteem, uh, that kind of stuff. He gave the gym to Gary to run. You know, so he can train my brother and other fighters, I mean, my cousins, my nephews, and um, you know, it just went, it's just been going on since then. And I said, "Well, we'll get you equipment." And I said, "Well, I, well, I need money." And I said, "Well, we'll get you money." I said, "No, it, it'll never happen." And uh, they, they, they did. They made it happen, but I just kept it going from there because then I fell in love with it. So it was a warehouse full of boxes and papers and all that stuff. So they had to go through here and clear all that stuff out and set up a ring and find out where everything was going to go and just, just to turn out. I was the first, one of the first uh, kids that ever came when this gym was just a warehouse full of boxes. I remember from day one when we cleaned this whole warehouse out and built everything from ground up. So I've been around a long time, for this, at least 25 years, yeah. Um, the kids need to have somewhere to go. We don't really have a boys and girls club, if you will, but the gym is, uh, is there, you know, I think nine or 10 o'clock at night, and it helps the kids quite a bit. The number one thing that Joe Glover always wanted for this gym was for the kids. You know, didn't want to turn away any kids. You know, if they couldn't afford to come here, we're not gonna turn them away. Rather than running the streets, they come into the community and get and train in boxing, something to do. If they're angry, we try to control their anger, try to get them to relax and calm down and think through situations. No one to walk away, no one to be smart and always come back in the gym and always have this here as their safe place. They know this is going to be here every day and they know it's going to take them somewhere if they work for it. They realize that this is a, this is a way out of here. This is a way out of the, the ghetto, out of the hood. The residents are actually fed up. They have no quality of life. Um, they're, they're constantly having to duck from the bullets or from activity that's going on next door to them. I see every day people getting in trouble and everything, but as soon as they come up to the boxing gym, they're safe. They're in a safe place. So our goal is to, you know, try to get the kids in, try to give them something to look forward to, you know, and. and and along with that, you know, we talk to the kids about school, about homework, about bullying, you know, and how to handle those situations. Just like any neighborhood, um, it does have a share of uh, concerns. It does have uh, drug problems. It does have uh, unsolved murders. But um, they're constantly working on that. They mean in the, the police department and the community. We talk to them about life skills, being careful who you hang around with, We're trying to identify certain peoples and certain things, not going to certain places. We had a kid that we had in here that should have made it. Should have made it. Yeah, I knew Troy. I knew Troy's whole family. Me and his um, uncle, me and his brother went to school together. I would say Troy was probably one of the best fighters I ever trained. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Troy Harden was, um, uh, was killed, murdered two streets over from the gym back in 2007. Him and the guy was seeing the same girl and actually they said the, uh, the guy hadn't broke up with the girl. She had broken with him but he hadn't broke up with her. Troy defended her, and Troy beat him up, but he had a gun. He went to his car and got a gun and come back and killed him. Troy was probably by far one of our best fighters we've ever had in the gym, and even all the other boxers would even agree with that, you know. He had a monster contract coming for him. 
probably would have been five, six time world champion. Boxing is a sport you gotta keep on punching. If you're not punching, you ain't winning. And that's what we do, we just keep on punching. We don't teach violence. So instead of teaching a kid how to be violent, to go hurt another kid, we don't say things like that. We teach them through a, a jab, a right hand, a left hook, or we use numbers. So we're not teaching them how to be violent, nothing like that there. So when they box, they're just competing and, and having fun doing what they do. It gives you how to respect people in a certain type of way and stay humble and just have fun. No disrespect for any other sport, but this boxing is a whole different level. So you definitely have to be disciplined and training and make sure you're in, in the best shape you can before you get in the ring. So that teaches you discipline in life, life as well. For the new people coming in now, like the Pastor Normans and all the other you know, adults coming in and guiding the kids, we didn't, a lot of this we didn't have when we was coming up. So this is definitely a good thing. We do a Bible study now on Wednesday nights with a pastor from a local church around here. Kids get very involved in that. Nothing is pushed as far as religious, but it's just to get them to open up their minds. I used to box when I was a kid, and I coach wrestling, and so I love, love the sport. And uh, being a pastor, I just felt that this was a great opportunity to just bring the Word of God here to some of these kids that need some guidance. Coach Gary, at first he was reluctant, okay? There was no God inside the gym, okay? And so we told him, hey, we're not coming in here to get involved with your fighting. We're here for the kids. We want to teach them about their spiritual side. Coach Robert was the one that really pursued having me here. He's the one that talked Gary into having me here. We came in, he saw the change in the kids, which brought forth a major change in his life also. I have a Bible study, you know, Giving the kids something to think about or to do when they leave here, and not just go run the streets. So since we've been doing that, you know, you know, everybody go home, everybody come back safe. The fathers for the, um, the community, I think that's a big impact because you know kids are the future. I can take from the um, the youngest one of the youngest fighters in here, Kevin, who is a state champion. Okay, and um, one day I was getting ready to leave. And he came and said, hey, Pastor Norm, Pastor Norm. I said, what's going on? He says, I got a question. I said, what's your question? I said, what exactly does it mean I can do all things through Christ? You know, and for a young 11-year-old to stop and ask a question like that, it tells me that there's been some changes going on in his life. Kevion, he sees something else. I smile when I talk about him. I started at six years old. I see my sister, my brother, and um, my brother KK, he used to box here too. My two, and I had two sisters that boxed, and I watched them. I met Kevion over three years ago coming in here. Very quiet, didn't talk to people, had his head down, wouldn't, wouldn't say a word. But I'll always watch Kevion, always look up, and he'd be looking around and you watch what we're doing with, with the older kids, and he wanted to do it. Yeah, I was quiet because I didn't know anybody until I started talking to them. I didn't know the coaches and shit until I started talking to them. So once I were working with on, he really started taking to it. He was in the gym every day. He would literally get dropped off and run across Sparkland into the gym. Some people don't even make it out for it. I want to make it to Olympics and um, turn pro. I want to be a gold medalist. I want people to remember me. He came and he trained so hard and he always wanted to learn. And he's 11 years old and he has over 50 fights right now. Go, finish strong, finish strong. Both of my boys been going since I've been here. We always win, they always win the um, qualifiers that's here. Then we all go to the, um, the regional, either want to win, want to lose, but then we want them always go to the nationals. Alice fight the way he fight because, I mean, um, he hungry for, for, that, for that title, that number one spot. That's all he talks about. So, I mean, if anything I can do to help him, you know, I sacrifice for that. You can only be a good boxer if you're hungry. 
You gotta be hungry. You wanna gotta wanna get out of the situation you're in. Well, I'm gonna try to go to the Olympics and then go pro. But if I don't make it to the Olympics, then I'm going pro. I wanna say this is my only way out other than education. If I make it here, I got education, but this is where I wanna take my life. When a kid loses, you have to kind of like know how to wing him so he don't take it personal. So if our kids lose a match, the last thing we want them to do is be upset about it. You know, they're going to be a little upset they lost, yes, they want to win, but it's not about winning or losing. It's about building character. Ain't nothing wrong with losing. Losing is where you learn at. It's like riding a bike and falling. You don't just lay there, you get up and try it again. To get in this ring, and face your opponent and do it, come in here and do a job. And for your arm to go up, for your hand to go up, there's nothing like it in the world. These kids walk here, they ride the bicycles here. You know, I got kids that ride the bicycles for miles to get here, okay? They come here for a reason, to learn this sport. And they love it. They love it. 